Good health is central to human happiness and well-being. It contributes significantly to not just your outward appearance, but equally ensures a healthy life circle. I am James Comfort, and this is Health Talks. Today we will be addressing the novel coronavirus and joining me after the break is a medical consultant who would be educating us on all we need to know. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Yes, I have here with me Dr. Imosili Ndoka. She is a professional medical consultant. Thank you so very much, Doctor, for joining us. Thank you. All right, so, um, so to begin with, I'd like you to tell us about the novel coronavirus. Okay. Um, we heard so much about um, the novel coronavirus in the last uh, one month, six weeks plus. Um, it is a pandemic that is ravaging the whole world, not just Africa. I think we are lucky in Africa that um, our mortality rate is um, a bit low. Okay. Now, some persons wonder what's the difference between corona and COVID. Um, I think it's good at this point we, we, we make us understand the difference between COVID-19 and corona. Virus. Now, COVID-19 is a strain of coronavirus. Like some persons keep asking, we've always had coronavirus, all this while. The first um, Spanish flu was a coronavirus. Some okay. common flus are coronavirus. But this particular strain, COVID-19, is a dangerous one that actually affects the lungs, I know. And that's what uh, complicates it and causes the much death that we have around. And that's why the government is um, making efforts to make sure ventilators are everywhere. Mm, because, uh, yeah, because by the time... COVID-19 gets serious, the deadly symptom that a patient presents with is difficulty with breathing. Okay, talk, talking about um, getting serious, is it really as um, deadly as it's been posed? Yeah, it is for some persons. You know, um, researches have been going on, theories and counter theories, hypotheses have been on, but it's been noticed that with some person, it is fatal, really fatal. Just like with every other normal um, uh, illnesses, yeah, yeah. you see some persons going through it and they come out strong. Okay. Some others go down with it. And then the risk factors actually make it fatal is the age. We've been told that um, with statistics, the older you are, the more fatal it is. You know? Then if you have other comorbidities, so probably somebody who had um, a problem challenging the lung before, probably treating tuberculosis, probably has uh, asthma, and other health conditions with the lungs. Um, so it makes it um, yeah. easier. It makes it more difficult. No, it makes it uh, faster. Like, um, it makes it easier for you to yeah, yeah. contract the To virus. succumb. It makes it easier for you to succumb. You know, we, we've seen some persons who are positive and are wondering. And that's why um, these um, um, conspiracy theories are actually selling fast. <laughs> because you say you saw somebody who was positive and yeah. is healthy. And the next thing they say is negative, And everybody feels it's a scam. But it is not a scam. Coronavirus is real. Persons have been dying for meat. And then some researchers have said that the reason why Africans, if you notice our um, fatality rate, our mortality rate is actually low. Okay. Can you please um, elaborate? Uh, maybe some of us do not really get that term. You're talking about okay. the fatality What I mean rate. is um, the death rate. Okay. The um, complication rate from it is low in, uh, in Africa. And then some scientists have said the reason is because, you know, part of the management of coronavirus, COVID-19, is chloroquine. So some persons have said probably because malaria has been trending here, chloroquine was used to treat malaria. If now it is needed to treat coronavirus, so somehow probably Africans through malaria will have developed some immunity against okay. such I form see. Of, Talking yeah. about chloroquine. I'm going to come back to that like much later. I'm very interested in that. Okay. But then still looking at um, coronavirus as its way, how exactly is it contracted? Okay. Um, now it is airborne. Now, uh, as I speak now, science have said, um, if I had corona, or if somebody had corona, okay. you know, in your speaking, you know, some speeches will come out. Yeah. yeah, that could release some viral load of coronavirus. 
And if I'm coughing, it makes it worse because the force at which I'm going to bring out um, the droplets of the virus is actually faster and the load of it will come out more. And then secondary to surface, because now I'm talking droplets are dropping around. If I cough, you know, I spread it, it settles on surfaces. Yes, that's you right. Know? And then if you are in the immediate environment where I cough, you may not need to settle in the environment, you can just inhale it from me. But if after wow. some hours, even, even if I've left there and I was around the environment and I've talked and coughed, droplets will settle down on, on, surfaces. on surfaces. And then what you do, if you touch, and then the next thing, probably your hands in your face. It takes like 12 hours on to normal, last on surfaces. normal surfaces. If it's on a, a metal surface, we're told it can last up to three days on metal surfaces, you know. So you go touch the surfaces, and then the next thing, you touch your, um, your, face. your face, your mouth, your eyes, the mucocutaneous surfaces. You know, if it's just on the skin, why they emphasize on the faces? Because the skin is enough for a protective guard. You okay. know? Yeah. Coronavirus find it difficult unless there's a break, probably an injury or a wound to so penetrate which means the skin. We still can have it penetrate through other parts of the body. No, it's it's difficult. Okay. Well That's it's possible. It's possible, but it's very difficult, you know. So from the face, why? Because you know, if you see the skin in our mouth, in our eyes, in our nose, they are very thin and light. They are not as thick as what you have in the yes. normal skin. So that's why it's easier to for coronavirus to penetrate to those uh, surfaces. So we say avoid touching your face as much as possible. Avoid touching surfaces. Um, if you are climbing the staircase instead of holding the rails, just walk up like that without touching the rails. Because we don't know who, who may have had contact, contact with, with a surface, the coronavirus, and then it touches the rails. And you are climbing, you touch it, and the next thing, your hands on your face. And then before you know it, you are going down with coronavirus COVID okay then uh, looking at it generally um we would like to know what the incubation period of the virus okay. is now um it's been said that the incubation period of coronavirus is 14 days but recent uh, researchers have told us that um even within three days before the patient starts showing symptoms now 14 days from when the patient contacts and when he starts exhibiting symptoms, symptoms. But recent, uh, you know, so much research has been going on because of this corona, COVID-19. Recent research, it says, even before the patient starts exhibiting symptoms, he can be contagious. Some have said within three days. So I may have met somebody or touched surface or contacted COVID-19, and I'm not it's symptomatic. No, yeah, it's not reflecting And that. Yes, and then um, I'm already carrying the, the virus. I can actually... Con, you know, contaminate or infect other persons, even when my symptoms hasn't started Displaying. manifesting. Wow. So, um, doctor, talking about symptoms, how does an individual get to know if he or she has contracted the virus? Okay. Now, um, talking about symptoms, we've been told from the beginning that if you have cough, dry cough, if you have difficulty with breathing, if you have um, symptoms, body pain, feeling as if you are sick, no, suspect you have coronavirus. Well, I then, think these are things that we already experienced at intervals, even before coronavirus came into the picture. Yes. So that's the funny thing. But even now, you'd be amazed to say that persons who have died of corona do not even have any of these symptoms. Okay. Yeah. I was told of um, UITH now, a patient, in short, they had to suspend the professor there because... Uh, the, the, the patient was his cousin who just called him at night and says he's having abdominal pain, he doesn't feel like eating, feeling heaviness in the legs, and he said, uh, please take um, flagyl, take uh, some medications, and take paracetamol and rest. The next day, he said the symptoms got worse. He started vomiting, and uh, no cough, no difficulty with breathing. The only positive thing in the history that suggests corona was that there was a history of travel. So Italy, oh. you know, but the symptoms didn't just fit what we know of Corona. A regular he, he, cold, a regular cold. So he died, and um, they took him for burial. You know, it was after his death that they took a sample, and it was positive. You know, so all the medical health personnel that attended to them, they were self-isolated. Out of about um, fourteen, there about five are started 
tested positive to coronavirus. So, so that's why the injunction of government stay at home is so important because you wouldn't know who really has coronavirus. Yes. The symptoms are bizarre. But the regular symptoms that we thought to know is the normal cough. You know, the, 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 the issue with the cough of corona is that it's dry, it's not productive. Okay. And then shortly after, it gives you difficulty with breathing. We all have had one cough or the other, but it doesn't go to giving you difficulty with breathing. To breathing, yes. No. So by the time you... So the most important thing is that if you have a history of contact with somebody who has traveled out... <laughs> Or history of contacting somebody who is positive. How do you know if the person is positive? I don't, okay, for instance, now, like I just gave you an instance. If you've been with me in studio like this, and then tomorrow you hear my sample was positive, <laughs> you should self isolate yourself. <laughs> Whether okay. you have the symptoms or not. Or not. Yeah. Mm. You self isolate. Self isolation at this period is actually protecting yourself and protecting the general public. public. I no. think this brings us down to um, the testing, as a matter of fact, okay. which. Um, helps to determine if you're positive or not and i was going to ask who can be tested can anyone be tested or do you are there certain criteria upon which someone can be tested for the virus yeah in nigeria now because the test kits are expensive and scarce not everybody's tested so if you have our standard for testing now is if you have a history of um being um, in contact with somebody who is positive or a travel history to countries Which that already uh, have confirmed already cases, confirmed, already have um, cases of corona, mm -hmm. you'll be tested. If you are presented with symptoms, whether there's a history of travel or a history of contact with anybody or not, if you are presented with symptoms that look like corona symptoms, dry cough, difficulty with breathing, you'll be tested. Okay, so are there special centers for this test alone, or we can just approach any hospital if you feel as though you are displaying any symptoms and you want to get tested? No, there are centers. You can not all hospitals have the kits to test you for COVID nineteen. Now, in Edo State, they are designated five centers, but as it's as I speak right now, only two. Are functioning. functioning yeah um the general hospital which is uh, is a center stella basanjo is a center Ira teaching hospital is a center the university of benin teaching hospital is a center and the central hospital benin too is a center, center. you know those centers are actually supposed to be testing centers but as i speak now because of the scarcity of the covid 19 test strips only irua and stella basanjo yeah are functioning those are the only places you can walk up to and you are tested but what we do here in my center in central which is we don't stress you going that way because now if you have to travel all the way the risk of exposing yes, other individuals being in contact with other yeah. persons so if you come to us and um, there's an issue of contact you have those symptoms what we do we collect your sample while we keep you in the isolation ward we send your sample down to Irwa or send it to Stella Basanjo. Are waiting when your result come. comes. Out. And then of, 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 of note is that we send samples twice. If it goes and comes negative, we we'll keep you and send it again. Now, if after the second sample returns negative, negative. and after 14 days, then we we'll let you go. go. Period. All right, so Dr. While speaking earlier, you mentioned something and you said um, the elderly ones are more vulnerable to this virus. But what we are being meant to understand generally is the fact that what we need to do is maintain proper hygiene. So I want to ask, why is it different with the elderly ones? Now, um, we say the elderly ones are more vulnerable. We, we actually didn't say only them should maintain a healthy hygiene. Everyone, of course should maintain a healthy hygiene. But you notice the deaths in Nigeria, uh, we've not, uh, we're yet to see the younger generation dying of it. Even some very few younger ones have been tested positive. But the deaths, the few deaths we had are uh, persons of, uh, you know, middle age and above. Okay. Now, the reasons being put forth is that the elderly, they are, they are long capacity, the um, residual tidal volume is already going down. And then we said before that COVID-19 actually targets the lungs, you know. So for an elderly person 
whose lung capacity is already going down, and then you now have a, a COVID-19 virus coming and attacking the lungs too. So that's why they succumb easily. Okay. The younger ones, are, you know, they overcome it faster than the elderly ones. The elderly ones. ones. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think uh, it has been quite an interesting session so far. And you would, of course, attest to the fact that we have been exposed to quite a number of facts. Anyway, do not go nowhere. We'll be taking a quick break right now. And when we return, we shall proceed. Welcome back. You're still on to Health Talks, and I still have here with me in the studio Dr. Imosili Udoka, and we are still stressing on the issue of the novel coronavirus. Now, moving forward, Doctor, the virus has been confirmed in, I think, 20 states in Nigeria so far, looking from the statistics uh, online, the current statistics in about 20 states, I think. Um, what do you think are the measures the government have put in place to be able to curb this virus? And would you even say they are effective? The, the virus is spreading uh, despite the lockdown. And I think uh, so many states and um, um, citizens are not complying with the lockdown. People are not staying at home. And, uh, and that's why the, the virus is spreading. Okay. Now, of course, if we all stay at home, the person who has it, the virus, you know, ends there. Yes. But because, um, the exposure is, is, is much, so that's why it's spreading from one state to another. But talking about a possible cure to this virus, we've had speculations that chloroquine actually um, has proved very effective and then quite a number of persons are responding positively to it. So it, how true is that? Yeah, quite true. The regimen um, prescribed by WHO now is chloroquine, uh, novel chloroquine in uh, Africa, um, zitromas and zinc and then people are responding all the persons in Nigeria have been discharged have been on this regimen okay and then the only other thing is supportive treatment now for those who have uh, issues with the lungs and they use ventilators to support them and all that but it is not termed the cure uh, for now if it's a cure we have <laughs> so we can say chloroquine is a cure for coronavirus yes chloroquine zitromas and zinc all right. anyway while uh, more researches are being done to get more effective um, 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 management, but for now, chloroquine has, and zitromas and zinc has done a lot. Okay. Uh, you know. um, I also want to know, um, this coronavirus, is it something that, is, that can reoccur as it were? Can someone test negative to the virus uh, probably after a period of treatment and then also after some weeks retest positive for the virus yeah in short um i think in china a few persons who had had corona have been cured are down with corona again again yeah so i think there's no immunity there are some viruses that if you have them once you can't have again like chicken pox if you have had chicken pox once you, you your body you develop an immunity you can't have it again but with okay. corona i think evidence is coming up that if you've had it and then you are exposed again you can likely have it again. But doesn't that mean that even after being taken to an isolation center, you've been treated, uh, you tested negative, doesn't it make it risky to release them still to um, relate uh, and mingle okay, with other no. persons? Once they've been treated and they are negative, they don't have us, so they are at no risk. But if such persons expose themselves to somebody who is not positive, they can get it again. Okay, so you on, it only reoccurs when you get exposed, exposed again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think that's, that's much um, clarity yeah. for us. Now, I would like to also know this because I believe so many other persons also want to be intimated on this. We are being told that as part of the preventive measures against coronavirus uh, is the use of face masks and also the use of gloves and the use of hand sanitizers. But then I'm wondering, how effective are these against the virus the face mask and the gloves do they really prevent you from contracting this virus now yeah the face masks i'll start from there actually can prevent uh, penetration of the coronavirus uh, to a great extent that was about 80 percent and you know there are different kind of masks okay and especially with this period where face masks on high demand some persons have used there's a particular material okay that is used 
that the N95, you know, um, face marks, that is the most effective we have around. It can up to 90% prevent you from getting. So I'm here, I'm wearing N95, and somebody has corona and coughs. My chance of getting it is low. Mm -hmm. No, but there are different materials that are being used, substandard ones, that some people even use ordinary cloth and cover their face. Yeah. Yeah. The use of ordinary material, no matter how thick it is, I would tell you it's just about 30% prevention it does okay. by using n95 face mask gives you about 90 percent prevention then the hand gloves we've been arguing that we see people wearing hand gloves on the street we've argued it that wearing of hand gloves when you're not a medical personnel all day long actually is going to increase our risks of corona now how somebody who is very put on a hand glove will not wash his hand because he there's this false sense of protection yes that that's true yeah and then he spreads it because he has touched a surface. He didn't wash the hand. He goes somewhere else. He's touching handles, door handles, and with um, the same glove. Yeah, with the same glove, and it, it makes it risky for others. You know, so we've advised if you're not a medical personnel, even in the hospital, we just done a hand glove. When we are done with the patient, we pull it to wash mm -hmm. our hands. So the idea of putting on hand glove, I see them in marketplaces. They're with hand gloves. It's actually risky. Hand gloves, because you will not you will not remember to wash your hands. You will not remember to use the hand sanitizer. You won't even see the need. To, yes, to you won't so. see the need to do so because you feel you are protected with the latest hand gloves. <laughs> That's true. Thank you so oh, much right. for um, making that very clear for us. Oh, but then um, the the hand gloves, the face masks, of course, which we've been told are other preventive measures. Yeah. But then, as individuals in the comfort of our homes, what can we do to help ourselves to prevent? the spread of coronavirus and then also to prevent ourselves from also contracting the virus. Now, as individuals at home, we've been advised stay home. Um, still maintain your social distance. <laughs> I, I must confess that my distance with my interviewer here is so close, three meters. <laughs> three meters is what is recommended, but the camera cannot pick up <laughs> when we stand far. So maintain your three meters distance, stay home, stay safe. Then wash your hands regularly okay. now then use hand sanitizers when you you are not able to wash your hands uh soap and water is not available soap and water is actually what is advice okay but you, you know you, you may not find soap and water everywhere yes. so that's why you carry your hand sanitizers because it's been said that alcohol um ethanol to some extent you know kills the virus so stay home maintain social distance Avoid um, social gatherings, you know, as much as possible. This is not a time to go partying. This is not a time for um, burial ceremonies, whatever you name it. Let's maintain social distance. Wash our hands. When you are coughing, we're told instead of coughing into your hands, cough oh, into your hair bowl. <laughs> and then if we do all that, we are okay. safe. Now, one thing I want to note, say is um, the Apostle uh, Johnson Suleiman has said it. You know, he said it during one service that, we shouldn't be reminded to do the usual. Yes, these are things we're yes, supposed things we should to be do doing. normally. Do you know what we've noticed in the hospital now? That since coronavirus started, the, the incidence of diarrhea and stooling in children has actually come down. Okay. And then we're trying to link it to this increased um, hygiene of hand washing. Hmm. And I, I want to employ everyone that after coronavirus, we should continue with our hand wash. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so right. very much, Doctor, very for being much. with us. This has Thank been you. quite an orientation session for us. Now, you've heard it, Doctor, I said it all. The virus does exist, but it is not a death sentence. What you need to do is to maintain proper hygiene, wash your hands, observe social distancing, stay home, and most importantly, stay safe.